This is Adel Gasly. I'm going to present to you part 3 of the chapter about induction machines. In this part, I will present the equivalent circuit of induction motors. In principle, the three-phase induction motor consists of six coils. Three coils are in the stator, as well as the short circuit rotor, which is magnetically acting as if it consisted of three coils. It is possible to make an equivalent circuit diagram using only one set of the three coils or one stator and rotor phase. The AC impedance of each winding comprises normally a resistance R and an inductive reactance X equal to 2 pi FL and it is measured in ohms where L is the inductance of the coil and it is measured in Henry. The stator and rotor coils are loading or interacting with each other through mutual magnetic induction. Therefore, when a current flows in the rotor coil, it introduces some additional current in the stator coil. At any slip, when the rotor rotates with a speed in M and a slip S, the rotor circuit frequency will be equal to F2 equal S multiplied by F1, where S is the slip and F1 is the frequency of the stator circuit. As we have seen previously for sinusoidal excitation of magnetic circuits, the uh, induced back EMF in the rotor can be expressed as follows, which is a function of the rotor circuit frequency. Now replacing the rotor circuit frequency F2 by SF1, we can obtain the following expression of the rotor back EMF. Or we can express it also as a function of the slip and the back EMF E2, that is a function of the stator supply frequency F1. So the difference between E2S and E2 is that E2S is a function of the rotor frequency F2, while E2 is a function of the stator frequency F1. This transformation allows us to connect later on the rotor and stator circuits electrically with all their variables having the same frequency which is the supply frequency or the stator frequency. Similarly, we can consider that the rotor winding reactance X2S expressed as a function of the rotor circuit frequency F2 can be also written as a function of the slip and the stator supply frequency F1 with a new variable called X2 instead of X2S. So here X2 will be a function of the stator frequency. Therefore, the rotor equivalent circuit per phase will be as shown here, where the rotor current I2 can be expressed as shown by this equation. Now, if we divide the numerator and denominator parts by the slip S, the current equation can be rearranged and expressed as follows. This equation is equivalent to this equivalent circuit. Moreover, we can represent the equivalent rotor resistance R2 over S by two resistances, one constant R2 and another one a function of the slip as shown by this equation. This leads to this equivalent circuit. The constant rotor resistance R2 represent the ohmic losses in the rotor windings while the second resistance, which is a function of the slip, represents the mechanical power developed by the rotor. So now we have built an equivalent circuit for the rotor circuit, which is having a frequency the same like the stator supply frequency. The interaction between the stator and rotor electric circuits can be represented with a common link like the transformers. This common link consists of magnetic core loss resistance RC and magnetizing reactance XM. The two windings are coupled magnetically through the air gap with an ideal transformer. So by transferring the rotor parameters 
to the stator side, we can get rid of the magnetic coupling and connect the transferred rotor equivalent circuit directly with the stator circuit as shown here. Notice that this equivalent circuit is very similar to the one we have seen for the transformer circuit. As we have seen earlier, the rotor equivalent resistance R prime 2 over S can be split in two resistances, one constant and one a function of the slip. So the equivalent circuit can be represented again as shown here. Each part of this equivalent circuit represents one actual part of the machine. For instance, this part represents the stator winding and is equivalent to the transformer primary winding. While this part represents the rotor and is equivalent to the transformer secondary winding. Finally, this part represents the mechanical load and is equivalent to transformer electric load. So as you can clearly notice, there is a remarkable analogy between the equivalent circuit of the transformer and the induction motor. In summary, the complete per phase equivalent circuit of the induction machine is the one shown here. This part represents the stator circuit and this part represents the air gap and magnetic coupling circuit. This part represents the rotor circuit. And this part represents the mechanical load and rotational losses. Of course, after we use the per phase equivalent circuit, all the variables must be converted back to their three phase values. For instance, if the stator winding is star connected, since V1 in this circuit represents the phase voltage, the actual motor terminal voltage is square root 3 multiplied by V1. Also, the total torque is 3 times the per phase torque, and the total power is 3 times the per phase power. Similarly to the transformer, we can also simplify the circuit of, or the equivalent circuit of the induction motor by making few assumptions. For instance, this is the IEEE recommended equivalent circuit where the core loss resistance is removed but core copper loss is still considered in the calculation of the efficiency. Another simplified equivalent circuit is the gamma or what is also called pi type equivalent circuit. The assumption made here is that the terminal voltage is much higher than the voltage drop across the stator impedance so that we can move the shunt branch to the terminal side. So we can simplify the equivalent circuit and redraw it as shown here. This makes it simpler to calculate the excitation current directly by using the terminal voltage divided by the shunt branch impedance. The rotor current is also calculated easily by dividing the terminal voltage V1 by the series impedances representing the stator and rotor winding impedances. So the gamma type simplified equivalent circuit can be represented as shown here. Again, notice the similarity between the induction machine and the transformer equivalent circuits. To simplify the calculations, the Thevenin equivalent circuit can be produced from the IEEE equivalent circuit. As you know, applying Thevenin theorem allows us to get rid of the shunt branch and convert it to series connections of impedance in the equivalent circuit. So applying the Thevenin theorem, V1, R1, X1, and Xm in the IEEE equivalent circuit can be replaced 
by the Thevenin equivalent circuit values V Thevenin, R Thevenin, and X Thevenin. The voltage V Thevenin is calculated using this equation. If the stator resistance is very small compared to the sum of the reactances X1 and Xm, which is usually the case, then we write V Thevenin as shown here. Notice that V Thevenin is always smaller than V1. Now, the Thevenin impedance is given by this equation. Considering again R1 small compared to the sum of X1 and Xm, then we can obtain R Thevenin as shown here. And since X1 is very small compared to Xm, we can obtain X Thevenin as nearly equal to X1. So after determining the equivalent Thevenin parameters of the stator side, we can use the simplified equivalent circuit to calculate the rotor current and motor performances. All these equivalent circuits are based on the knowledge of the stator and rotor parameters, such as the resistances and the reactances of the windings. Similarly to the transformer, these parameters are usually measured and calculated using two tests, which we will see in the next slides. Let's start with the stator resistance. The stator resistance is usually measured using the DC test using an ohmmeter or a bridge. The measured value between the two terminals is equivalent to twice the stator resistance R1. However, since the measured resistance is a DC equivalent resistance, while the winding is subject to an AC current, it is preferable to use a correction factor to find an approximate AC value of the stator resistance, taking into account the skin effect in the winding conductor under alternating current. Usually at 50 or 60 Hz, the difference is not significant, and we can consider them equal. However, for high frequencies, a correction factor should be considered. And you should notice that the AC resistance should be higher than the DC resistance. The second test is the no load test. In this test, the machine is not loaded mechanically. We usually apply rated voltage at the stator terminals and we keep shaft rotating freely. Then we measure the voltage, current, and power for this no load operation using 1 voltmeter, ammeter, and wattmeter. Note that the equivalent circuit at no load is equivalent to this one, where the rotor circuit is considered open because at no load the slip is equal to zero. And remember that we have a resistance R prime to over S becomes almost an infinity, so it's an open circuit. So mainly the current will be on the stator side. Where R no load or R NL represents the total losses, including the stator copper loss and rotational loss, which also include core and mechanical loss. So from the measured line to line no load voltage VNL, we can deduce the equivalent circuit phase voltage V1 as shown here while the stator phase current is the same as the line current. Then the rotational loss can be calculated using this equation, and the equivalent no load impedance is determined as Z no load is equal V1 over I1. And the no load equivalent resistance R no load is determined as phase power P1 divided by square of phase current I1. Finally, the equivalent no load reactance can be deduced from the calculated total impedance and the resistance as given by this equation. Note that this no load reactance is actually the sum of the stator winding leakage reactance X1 and the magnetizing reactance Xm. We cannot separate them at this moment, but we'll come back to this expression later. The third and last test is the blocked rotor test, where the rotor is not allowed to rotate by locking it mechanically. 
we apply a voltage at the stator terminals. This voltage is normally gradually increased from zero until rated current flows inside the stator. Note that here we cannot apply full voltage or rated voltage to the stator, otherwise we'll have a very high current. In this situation, the slip is equal to one, so the uh, R prime two over S is normally equal to R prime two, which is a low resistance and will draw a very high current. So here we should be very careful not to apply high voltage and we increase the voltage slowly until we get rated current inside the stator. So in this test also we measure the voltage, the current and the power. And the equivalent circuit under this situation is the one shown here. Note that the branch current is considered very small compared to the rated current and hence the branch impedance is omitted. Now we need to first calculate the per phase values of the voltage, current and power. Then we can calculate uh, the blocked resistance which is the sum of the stator and rotor resistances as calculated as P1 over I1 square. Then Z blocked is equal to V1 over I1 and X blocked, which is the sum of X1 plus X prime 2, is calculated as shown here. From the calculated value of RBL, we can deduce R prime 2 as RBL minus R1. R1 is the stator resistance that was measured in the, with the DC test. On the other hand, we know X1 plus X prime 2, which is equal X blocked, but we don't know X1 or X prime 2. So we assume X1 equal X prime 2, and we assign them the value of XBL over 2. Finally, we calculate XM as X no load, which we calculated from the no load test, minus the value of X1 that we just calculated from the blocker rotor test. With this, we can say that we have calculated all the parameters of the IEEE equivalent circuit from stator to rotor and the magnetization branch. It is important to note that the rotor equivalent resistance R prime 2 that is calculated here plays an important role in the performance of the induction machine. A more accurate determination of this resistance is recommended by the IEEE, as we will see in next slide. To have a more accurate circuit, we put back the magnetizing reactance branch in the equivalent circuit during blocked rotor condition. This equivalent circuit can be converted to this one, where R and X are the equivalent series resistance and reactance of the parallel connection of XM and X prime two and R prime two. So the blocked resistance RBL will be the sum of R1 and an equivalent resistance, say R, which is the resistance of R prime two plus J X prime two in parallel with XM as shown below. Since R prime two is usually very small compared to X prime two plus XM, then we can obtain the resistance R expression as shown here. So we can deduce the value of R prime two as given by this equation which is a more accurate value than the previous one. So the DC resistance test plus the no load test and the blocker rotor test have allowed us to determine all equivalent circuit parameters in addition to rotational loss. This equivalent circuit will allow us to calculate all performances and characteristics of the induction machine which we will study in next parts of this chapter. This is the end of this part. Thank you for watching this video.